Now, 32-bit constant. We already have seen how we can uh, handle 16-bit constant. In, in case of add i, add, uh, add i, we could uh, handle 16-bit constant. But what if the constant is more than 16-bit? Yes, it is say 32-bit, but let's discuss, discuss it. What, uh, uh, what we could do uh, if the constant is more than, uh, that is greater than 16-bit. How can we handle it? There is no direct instructions that could handle 16, more than 16-bit instruction. Uh, the I-type instruction, I-type instruction, it can handle a, a constant that is less than is equal to 16-bit. So, we need to have special arrangement for uh, this kind of scenario. Now, how can we do that? Okay, to do that, we need to use these two instructions, LUI and RI, load upper immediate and RI, that is bitwise R, but this is R type. Now, uh, the, both of these instructions are I type instructions, so we need to use this. Now, how this uh, this uh, this uh, lui instruction works see here uh, when uh, we use let's say this value uh, it's 61 we would like to have uh, this 61 uh, loaded into uh, this s naught but in upper immediate part not in the lower uh, lower immediate parts which means we will be converting this 61 into 16 bit and we'll be loading it into the upper msb 16 bit as you can see here that this is the upper msb 16 bit and this is our 61 but instead of coming into the lsb part this lui instruction stores this this value into the msb part now s not is 32 register as we all know so what would happen to the LSB 16 bit when 61 gets stored in the MSB 16 bit. LSB 16 bit will all be zero then. So we have a 16 bit value which is stored in the MSB part and all LSB bits in S0 is right now zero. Now let's say we would like to store this value uh, 2304 into uh, lower order uh, LSB bit of S0. How can we do that? We would do uh, or I operation. We would execute or I operation then. So let's convert this one into 16 bit value and then perform bitwise or operation of this uh, S, S0 and 2304. If we perform bitwise operation, then we would see that S0 holds after this operation s not would hold this value s not would hold this value now this way we can store more than 16 bit value in or transfer more than 16 bit value in a register so you could see that this one is let's say uh, this one is uh, within 16 bit value and sixth one is represented within 16 bit but in total, these two value requires a 32 bit. Okay, so this is how we could store a, a 32 bit value. At, uh, uh, we could store uh, or transfer 32 bit value in a register. We cannot do it in, in, in at one go, but with the help of LUI and or I, we could do that. So, branch addressing. Branch instructions specific uh, instructions specify of course two registers and then target address. So this is what the uh, uh, formatting would look like. Now how it works target address? How do we calculate target address? We need to do execute this. We need to uh, calculate this. PC is already incremented by four by this time. We already have seen when we are calculating the branch target address from that diagram. We have seen that whatever the value that PC holds, it gets incremented by four and then it is being added with the 32-bit uh, uh, ex uh, or sign extended value of this constant. This is how the target address was calculated. 
Now jump address, uh, J, J type address, jump, it's uh, J, J and JAL, these two are jump type address. So the uh, it, it has opcode and then the 26 bit address. Now, how do we calculate it? We, uh, P, uh, four bits, four MSB bit comes from the uh, program counter and the rest comes from this, uh, this 26 bit. And we concatenate, this is just concatenation. We, we concatenate this value with this one. This is how we generate the 32 bit memory address when we are dealing with J type instruction. Now let's see uh, uh, with uh, some example or one example sequence of code, how this uh, branching and jumping may work. Now, uh, we already know what this is. It is a shift left logical, then add, then load and branch, add I, jump and then exit. So how this, this would work, this code would work. Now let's see this one. Let's see, the, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's assume that our starting address is this and just forget about these values. Uh, we, you, you'll know it uh, when you convert them into, uh, uh, when, or, or when you start encoding them but just for the time being, understand it the way it is right now. So let's say SLL, this is uh, the formatting, SS, SLL is R type instruction, so the formatting would be this. Uh, and then our add, again, I add is R type instruction, so this is this is our 800 and then, a, a, sorry, 80,000. So the next one would be 80,000 plus 4, which is this. So then these are all sequential instructions. As you can see, this is, uh, uh, when pointer comes here, then uh, uh, after this, this one, after uh, this, this one, and after uh, this one, this one. This, these are all sequential execution. Uh, there could be a branching based on the previous values. Uh, if there is a branching, then the pointer would come here. Otherwise, the pointer would come here. Now let's see how it works. So as I said, from this, uh, th this one uh, represents in this, uh, in this part, this instruction represents in this part and this instruction repre represented in this part. These are all sequential. Now we are into the branching instruction. We are into the branch instruction, which is this one. So based on the branch decision, it, we, we may not need to take branch or we may not based on the value of these two registers. Okay that is coming from the upper two instructions or upper three instructions. So let's say we need to take branch. So where should this, uh, this pointer go? This pointer should go to this exit. See, there is an arrow. There is an arrow which is coming here. So this is why, uh, what would happen if branching takes place. But if, the, if branching doesn't take place, then the pointer would come here or the execution of the program would come here, which means this instruction, add i. Once add i is uh, completed, then the next instruction is this jump, which is this one. So from this one, say, say this is loop, that means to this point of the memory. So see the arrow here, see the arrow here, the program comes here and this one continues. This is how this program uh, executes. You can write your own program and you can see how they are executed. Branching far away, how we can execute this one or how we can handle this one. But it says if branch target is too far to encode with 16 bit offset, you need to remember that uh, we, in case of branching, uh, I type instruction, so we have 16 bit offset, not more than that. But what would happen if you need to go to a distance which is more than 16 bit? Assembler rewrites the code. So assembler helps, uh, uh, helps us. In this case, that assembler rescues us uh, in this kind of scenario. How it can do it? Let's say this is this is instruction which is B E Q S not S one and uh, what this says that if S not is equal to S one, then go to L one. But the issue is L one is greater than sixteen bit. So that means uh, from this memory, uh, uh, this memory address, let's say this memory address is x, 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 uh, this, this is the memory address of this branch instruction. So, the uh, program needs to make a jump from this x, x, x to a distance which is greater than 16-bit 
away. This this uh, distance is greater than 16 bit away. How can you handle that? Because we know that B N E B E Q. These are the instructions which comes under I type instruction and I type instruction. We have the offset or constant field with six, uh, which is 16 bit. But as I said, this is more than 16 bit. So how can we do that? Assembler helps us uh, helps us in this case. So what assembler does? Assembler sees the instruction. It is BEQ. So it inverts the instruction. See, this is BEQ. So what assembler does here? BNQ. And this L2 is actually within 16 bit. Within 16 bit. So if this is not equal to, uh, uh, that is S0 and S1 are not equal, equal, then it goes to L2, which is this. Now, what would happen if they are equal? If they are equal, that, that means it is a it is sequential aggregation. That means the uh, the pointer would come to this one. That means this this L1. But we already know that L1 is greater than 16 bit. So we can cover greater than 16 bit value with J type instruction or jump because jump has an address field of 26 bit. So we can handle 26 bit with jump. That's why assembler inverts your original instruction and then it jumps uh, to a location which is greater than 16 bit. Now, if it was, let's say, B, N, E, then assembler would have started with B, E, Q here. Okay. This is how it works. Addressing mode. In uh, MIPS, we have five type of addressing which is one is immediate addressing. The example for this one is this. At I, uh, let's say 10, 11, and 10. This is a, this is the immediate value. And then register addressing, where we, everything is inside the register. The example for this one would be at 10, 11, 12. And then base addressing. Base addressing is a load store uh, addressing. So let's say load uh, 10, 40, and base address is let's say S0. And then PC relative addressing. PC relative addressing are uh, B, N, E, uh, 10, 11, uh, let's say else. This is Program counter relative addressing. The PC means program counter relative addressing. And then pseudo random addressing is J type instruction. Let's say J1024. These are pseudo random addressing where we do not apply. See, uh, here we are applying arithmetic operation. Here we are applying arithmetic operation. And these are all in the register. We also have to, uh, in this case, uh, uh, we have sign extension. But here we are performing concatenation operation. So this is called pseudo-random uh, operation or instruction or addressing. This slide shows how a high-level code gets translated into machine instruction. The first one uh, is our high-level code which is C program. Compiler takes it as input and generates assembly language program. And then assembler takes this assembly program or assembly code it generates machine language modules. Linker combines these machine language modules with library routine and then creates executable machine language program. When loader gets this executable, uh, executable uh, file, it places that file into the appropriate memory location. Here yeah, we could see assembler pseudo instructions. So most of the assembler instructions represent machine instructions one to one. But there are situations where we do not have a, a direct mapping. So assembler generates a machine instructions for those. For example, move. Move is a pseudo instruction which is actually add T0, register 0 and T1. So what it does is it actually moves the content of register T1 into register T0 as zero register is always a zero. Then 
BLT branch on less than still uh, we do not have this instruction we already have discussed in a previous slide that these are expensive uh, these are these requires expensive hardware so we do not have these instructions and they are not very common branch equal and branch not equal they are very common but but these in pseudo instructions are not very common so this pseudo instruction when assembler encounters uh, these instructions it generates uh, by the combine uh, just by combining more uh, more than one uh, one to one mapping instructions and the output is equal to that pseudo instruction concluding remarks of this chapter we have seen these design principles simplicity favors regularity smaller is faster make the common case fast good design demands good compromise also layers of software and hardware which means compiler assembler and then hardware there is layers and also mips is typically a risc instruction set architecture which is uh, different from other architectures for example 8x86 this slide shows the major of mips instruction executions in a in the benchmark program as it can be seen that arithmetic uh, instruction class uh, the frequency is 16% in case of integer uh, benchmark and then floating point benchmark it's 48% for example logical in integer case it's 12% and in floating point case it's 4% for jump type instruction in integer case it's 2% and in floating point case it's 0% so this is the frequency 